Hello everyone, this is Tom Morley with video number 11 in the Space Blasters 84 tutorial series. In this video, we'll be revisiting all of the scripts in the scenes and putting all the scenes together. By the end of this video, you'll have a fully functioning game. We have a lot of ground to cover, so let's get started. Let's open up the Space Blasters 84 project. And I noticed in from a review of the last video that I had a couple of omissions. So let's fix those right now. Let's click on scene. Let's open the rock L scene. And let's look at the code. On line number 20, you'll see that I put if globals game score. Well, that's not going to work. We need to use the has function. So globals.has. We need to put that in there. And then on line 21, we need globals.get, not just globals. So we're going to put .get here. Because what I want to do is I want to check to see if we have a global parameter called game score. And if we do have it, well, then I want to uh, perform this action here. But I need to get the game score and add the points to it. Okay. Now I need to change line 20 and 21 in all of the rock scenes that we created. The rock L, the rock M, and the rock S. So let's go ahead and close the rock L. Um, first let's save it I guess. Now let's close it. And we'll do the same thing with the scene. I don't think we have to save the scene but we'll just do that and close it anyways. We'll open the medium scene, click on the script. We will fix line 20 and 21, so it's globals.has and globals.get on 21. We'll save that. We'll close it. Same thing with the scene. Save scene, close scene. Now we'll open the rock S for the small rock. Do the same thing. Dot has. Dot get. Okay. Save the scene. Let's save the script. And let's close them up. We'll close the scene too. Now we want to open the main Space Blasters 84 main scene. So this is where you should be uh, up to this point. So let's add the the rock scene. We do that again by making sure that the SB84 root node is selected and let's add a scene file and it will be the rocks just the main rock scene this one right here so we'll add that rock scene in there and is I want to move it up the tree structure so that it's above the background root so we will just move it up okay after we modify all of the scenes here what you're going to get I'm going to give you a preview of what you'll get here is um, you'll get the behavior of a full-fledged game uh, you'll start you press enter you'll have your asteroids and uh, the small ones will be destroyed with one hit um, the big ones need three smalls one again and the mediums will take two if you get hit then of course the game is over so that's, uh, that's what we're going to end up with is a fully working game. But we need to go through all of the different scenes and update some code because I decided to use global parameters uh, to make the, the game function the way we want it to. So let's take a look at the Space Blasters 84 root scene, uh, so the script for that. 
you'll see that I pared down the variables quite a bit. So the, so the only variables we'll be using now will be the, the variable for the score and the variable for the high score. We're going to use globals now for knowing when the game is running and updating uh, or holding the game score as well as we are going to introduce a new global parameter called the game level and uh, we'll be using that for when we want to end a game level. Basically my Linux Mint 17 machine crashed on me and when it crashed um, I lost some of the the files I had for the tutorial series. So basically um, I'm going to run through all of the scripts to make sure that um, we're on the same page and that you have the same information in your scripts that I have. So I don't think that anything's changed in the input for the user start stop the game but we did change some information in the uh, start game function and you'll see the changes down here at the bottom. We have basically added set the parameters for the game level, the game running, and the game score. Um, once we've set those global parameters, well we can use those parameters in any scene that we have in our tree. So that's pretty cool. All of these different nodes, uh, the scripts in the different nodes can interact directly with the global uh, parameters. So that's going to come in real handy here. So we've added a few new lines there for setting the the global uh, parameters. Now in the running loop when the game is running we definitely change some stuff here. So we've got some code where we're checking to see if our game score is larger, our global parameter game score is larger than the score variable that we have in our main root scene here. And if it is larger, well then we just want to set the score to whatever the game score parameter is. And then we want to update our HUD. So we'll get the HUD node and we'll set the score uh, passing it whatever the score value is. Then I'm going to check for if I want the want to quit the game, right? The, if I, if somebody pressed the uh, escape key, which is the UI cancel, the only thing that I've added here is I'm going to check to see if the game level is false. That is, did something happen? Did the ship blow up because it hit a rock? Is the game level supposed to end? If it is false and the game level is supposed to end, well, then I go into this code. So it's either if somebody press the escape key or the game level is over. I come in here and I set the game running to false because the game will no longer be running and of course I set up my uh, music for my menu. Uh, I set up the, the uh, game over text and if my high score is larger than the current high score I update that and I also get my HUD root and set the game over to whatever the high score is. So, so now let's check out the code in the ship scene. So let's click on this and uh, highlight and make it so we can edit the children here. And let's hit the, the script for the kinematic body 2D because I did change some code in this scene as well. So I don't think I've changed any of the variables in here. Um, and I don't believe that I changed anything in the fixed process as far as ship movement. I believe the only thing that I've uh, modified is down at the bottom of this this code is I'm using if the ship, the kinematic body 2D where, that represents our ship is colliding with something. I'm checking to see that. And the only thing that the ship can collide with is a rock. Remember we made it so that the lasers would not collide with the ship itself. So the only thing that can collide with the ship is a rock. So if it is colliding with something we know that it's a rock. So we want to basically end the level. Reduce our speed to zero 
and we want to set the game level to false because we no longer want to run this particular level. Okay, And I think I've changed the else statement here to include uh, minimizing our kinematic speed for the ship down to 0, 0.0 and I've moved it to its parked place in the game area screen. So I think that really from 61 down, uh, line 61 down, is the code that I modified to get it to work with the global um, parameters. But just in case I, there's additional code other than that, I'm going to start at the top and uh, scroll down a little bit. And you can always pause and uh, just double check your code with uh, what I have here. So that's how I'm going to deal with any collisions with the ships and the rocks. But I also need to deal with any time the laser collides with a rock, right? So let's take a look at the laser scene. Let's go ahead and uh, make sure you save your, your script for both your ship and your main scene. And let's close them. And let's do the same thing with the scene. Save your scene and close your scene. Yes. Now let's open the laser scene. Okay, we'll go to the laser scene and let's open up the script for the laser scene. And you can see that I've changed quite a bit in the, the code for the, the laser route here. Now, in the fixed process, I'm basically going to check to see if the kinematic body has gone off the screen. Okay, that's not new. That's, uh, that's something that was already in there. But then I added this here and I'm checking to see I'm going to get node uh, kinematic body 2D and see if it's colliding. So I'm going to check to see if this laser is colliding with anything. And if the laser is colliding with something, remember it can't collide with the ship. The only thing it can collide with collide with is a rock. So we check to see if it's colliding. If And if it is colliding, uh, we're going to check that here. If it, if it is colliding with something, then we want to this get node kinematic body 2D, which is this kinematic body 2D right here. And I'm going to call the function get collider. So what this will, will return is the object that I actually collided with, which is going to be you know, one of the rocks, either a large rock, a medium rock, or a small rock. So I'm going to reduce the durability of that rock by one. So eventually, every time I hit the rock with a laser, eventually it's going to be zero. And the rock will basically, you know, we have the, the behavior in the rock itself to remove the rock when it reaches a durability of zero. And, uh, and also update the score. So we'll we'll take a look at the rock scene again uh, just so that you can see that. And uh, last but not least I want to remove the laser from the the running game. So we'll use the cue free to remove the laser once it hits a rock. Then I believe that's the only thing different in the laser scene. So there's the laser uh, laser script. So again save close and save and close so let's open up the large rock scene and just take a peek at the at the script so we see that durability section that uh, we were talking about earlier. So the rock itself, remember, has two variables and one is the durability and the other is the the points that you'll get when you destroy a, a rock. So when a laser actually um, decreases the durability value down to zero, well when it's reduced down to zero then which is right here on line 19. Once the durability reaches zero, then we're going to check to see if we have a game score. We definitely will have it at this point. And uh, then we're going to add 
the points, the 30 points, to the game score parameter. And then we're going to remove the rock from the scene. So, so that's, that's what's going on. That's the behavior that we put in the rock itself. So the rock will take care of itself. Now let's click back on the uh, 2D tab here and let's click on rigid body 2D and hit the crosshairs here because what I want to do is um, let's move this rock up into the middle that'll avoid some um, collision mistakes uh, between the laser when it's first generated I found that when I was playing the game that um, it just uh, is a better location to place the rocks is up here off the the game screen in the middle so let's go ahead and save that scene and let's close that scene and open up the other two and do the same thing so we'll open up the medium rock we'll click on the 2d tab the crosshairs make sure it's selected um, sorry rigid body make sure that's selected then the crosshairs and uh, move it up to center. Save the scene. Close it. And one last time for the small rock. Hit the 2D tab. Make sure rigid body 2D is selected. Use uh, my middle mouse scroll to kind of position things. And and I'm going to place it up there and I'm going to save the scene and I'm going to close it alright so we should be all set if I load the main scene I open up the main scene here I should be able to run it and everything should function the way I expect it to let's go ahead and play it here and yeah it loads up so we don't have a problem with that and um, I'm going to expand it here and I'm going to kill my key monitor because it does add a little bit of uh, delay to how the game functions and I just hit a small one I got 10 points I got 30 points for that one another 30 so it looks like everything is working fine we have a fully functioning game and we could play this forever. Now all we need to do is add some polish. We want to add some we need to add some particle effects when we hit the rocks so that we see some cool explosions. We also want to see some thrust on the, the ship when we move left to right and we need to add some sounds for the lasers and uh, when the rocks get hit we want to hear some explosions. So we've got some polish to do in the next video but the next video will be the last one. So I'm glad you've uh, stayed with me this long and um, I'll see you in the next video.